Hello everyone, uh, a quick video about this uh, HP ZBook uh, G4 Studio machine running with a, a UAD Thunderbolt interface on Hackintosh and it's running fine at 128 buffer sides and 44 kilohertz sample rate which are the default settings for the Logic Pro benchmark and yeah so here you can see the temperatures it's running at and the number of tracks so the temperature is about 75 degrees with a full load of 27 watts and we're running uh, 48 tracks uh, now as you people may know um, this, this test is actually quite meaningless for audio because in real projects you never run those many tracks without any kind of uh, master or bus or any kind of like there's no connection between the tracks here so these are all separate tracks and this perfectly scales with multi-core while real world tests don't real world uh, real world uh, projects do, do, don't do this uh, the nice thing that you can have with uh, this machine which is something that most laptops with thunderbolt fail to do is run this i mean some laptops can't even run thunderbolt interfaces at all on windows or you can connect them you can try to play some music there through them but they will just fail miserably uh, but uh, it will just have some digital noise and everything but now if you go to i think that's a project settings the one nice thing that we can have with this which is something that also some um, like Akintosh will not be able to do is switch to uh, a higher sample rate on the UAD so you can see the, the interface is clicking fine of course we're gonna need like to run a lot less tracks here like half the tracks that's my guess less than half of course so you will need to oh I'm not really good at this oh this will need more than, than one hand oh let's do this okay I can't do that well I need to desync a lot like disable a lot of tracks to run this at 96 but yeah the, the point is that the the UAD card worked fine was able to switch and should be able to play back just fine at 96 as you can see it's recorded through the interface um, let's try to hit play with 20 tracks this is my guess that should work here we are oh yeah system overload so yeah it's a little bit less because it's more than double the processing power yeah it's very fun so yeah we, we were at 50 before so that should be around uh, 17 yeah 14 well whatever there's a little bit more over overhead here but yeah so that's the first thing and then we can show you um yeah the, the trackpad is just it's a very very nice clicky trackpad where you can just click drag and drop and it was just like a real Mac so this machine provides a very very good like laptop experience for Hackintosh uh, for music production on the go and everything uh, of course you will never be able to reach the same uh, level of performance and um, uh, battery of an M1 but it will vastly outperform any i9 MacBook Pro you can see out there even though this one is a 4 core i5 uh, i7 because as a, as again uh, as as I previously said like single core performance is most important uh, in real projects you don't do that much multi tracks and the temperatures are so good with this machine uh, we were peaking at like 60 to 70 degrees on uh, on the the full project and so that means that we are able to sustain like very high uh, pressure workloads for indefinite period of time and uh, yeah and that's the main thing about this machine like it's it's a real workhorse it's it's not like it's not about the the looks it's about the, the performance and this provides a lot in a very 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 convenient package uh, for a very attractive price and you can like this machine actually now is running with double SSD it's 32 gigs of RAM and has um, 126 25 6 gigabyte SSD for the main drive and one terabyte SSD for data they're both NVMe of course uh, but you can run like up to two plus two 
you know, configuration if you want. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of performance going on. And I will now check um, Cinebench R23 to provide a, like a baseline score for, for that. I will run the test and just pose afterwards. Okay, so the machine has just started making noise after a couple of seconds of R23, which you probably know is a very intensive test. And it's running now at 75 degrees. We are inside of a heated room and it's a very, very hot uh, march. I think probably one of the hottest march ever re registered. Uh, so yeah, uh, again with, with around 28, 29 watts of power consumption, uh, the machine is quite hot on the surface uh, because of the heating from the internal components, but the fan is keeping quite, quite, um, um, around quiet, yes. So we're going to see the score. Uh, it should be around 4,900. That's uh, the previous score that I got with this. But sadly, the uh, macOS uh, power consumption, uh, system power, system consumption by like the various uh, background activities is quite high, so you will now not see, uh, you will see some variance between runs. And the Geekbench 5 score is around 1,070, uh, never reached 1,100 for single score on Geekbench uh, 5. Uh, I didn't run Geekbench, Geekbench 6 yet, uh, I, will, well, I will do that later, after this. Uh, and yeah, so that's the performance uh, expectation you, you should get with this kind of machine with some tuning. Uh, again, uh, if you try to run, run this kind of test, which is a long and multi-core test on any kind of MacBook Intel, it will just throttle to death. Now we reached 78 degrees, which is nothing for a laptop. As you see, if you ever try to, to, to look at the temperatures, oh yeah, here it is, 4,750. Uh, and yeah, so the, the maximum temperatures were under 78 degrees, which is, again, for a laptop, is, is a very, very cold temperature. So I started with uh, Geekbench 5, actually, and um, here's uh, the score is coming up. Uh, as I said, uh, it's averaging between 1050 to 1100, and the multi-core is over 4000, 4100 sometimes. And here we are. Now I'll run Geekbench 6. Okay, so this is Geekbench 6, uh, which is quite a bit heavier on the CPU, uh, as you can see from the load on the left. But it's still not like 100% load all the time, so it's not a, a throttling test at all. And therefore, like MacBooks score much better on this test than they do on Cinebench. And that's how they actually like they can like seem to be good so this part is the multi-core part as you can see the the load is increasing a lot in the multi-core section uh, we were previously running at one about 10 watts because it was single core and now it's averaging like 25 watts 27 but again it's like those tests are very very fast and um and you can see that the, while they're loading the, the data the cpu comes back throttles back so do not have any kind of thermal throttling. So we're running at 60 degrees, which is, yeah, nothing for a laptop. And uh, let's see the, the scores. I already ran the test a couple of times before just to check the consistency. It seems to be a little bit more consistent than Geekbench 5, actually. Uh, we'll compare the various runs once it's finished. Uh, the fact that I'm actually, I have a uh, uh, power gadget in the background is also going to, like, Influence the score a little bit. I did all the run with the with, with the program open. Uh, so that's the score. Single core and multi core for Geekbench 6. These are some previous runs. And again, this was uh, a Geekbench. Oh, that's a bad run. When you load the, the operative system, uh, and that's a Geekbench uh, 5 score again. <coughs> that's all, I guess. Ciao.